the biggest kudo miner update to date. Can it mine you more Bitcoin? Let's find out. Shane here, thanks for stopping by my channel. So today we're gonna to look into Kudo Miner's latest version, version 1.0. I'm gonna show you what it's all about. We're gonna walk through all the features and we're gonna see how much more profitable it actually is. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing, clicking that notification bell, and if you like this kind of content, hammer those likes. Let's get into it. All right, so Kudo Miner, as you guys know, I've been using this miner on and off for about a year and a half now. It's been a really solid miner, and it actually won my last Miner Cup, Miner Cup 3. If you guys should happen to have missed that, be sure to check that out. Link should be popping up here shortly. So Kudo Miner just did edge out nice ass in that competition. It was definitely a close one. But the point of this video is the latest version of Kudo Miner. Like I said, Kudo Miner version 1.0. We're going to dive in here real quick into the computer. I'll show you what it's all about. And then I have a small announcement at the end for Bitcoin Fridays. So without further ado, let's hop in and check out what the latest version of Kudo Miner is all about. All right, so here we are on kudominer.com. Everything I'm talking about will be down below this video, so don't worry about searching for any of this info for yourself. Kudominer beta v1.0. Head over to what the updates are all about. We're excited to announce the release of Kudominer version 1.0. This update is our biggest one yet, featuring major stability improvements across all operating systems, increasing uptime, reducing crashes, and overall improve your mining experience. So one of the big features is the command line interface. A feature that was requested in our product feedback survey was the ability to run Kudo Miner via command line interface. I'm not gonna go too much into that, but some of the benefits of that are smaller installation size, lower system resources can be used programmatically in scripts, et cetera, et cetera. The main thing I wanted to point out with this latest version, which is what I'm doing right now, is running the app as a service or a headless operation. Uh, this means that Kudo Miner has been configured to launch and run in the background without the need of user interface and without the need to log into your computer. The benefit of this is that the app can start before you even log in and can be started and stopped remotely, which is what I like. Of course, that's just my own personal preference. Benefits of running a headless operation, lowers memory and processor usage for faster and more reliable mining, allows for desktop free rigs, freeing up GPU VRAM, helps with interaction, free installation and setup, fewer dependencies, making the installation smaller and less complex. For more information about how to run Kudo Miner as a service, headless operation, view our fact here, we'll check that out in a second. And these are basically just the major hitters with the version 1.0. Increased profitability, they added Phoenix and G minor updates. For Linux support, moving from alpha to beta. Added the ability to run via command line interface. Added the ability to run in the background as a service. Added multiple update channels. Added new jobs for retrying workloads that are failing. Added a remote device name and label assigning. Major stability improvements and bug fixes. One major thing to point out here, for existing users, Kudo Miner will not, repeat, will not auto update to the latest version 1.0. You will need to manually update this yourself. To do this, completely uninstall the current version from your computer and then install the latest version 1.0. And then of course, here's a link here for more details if you guys wanted to go ahead and look through that. All right, so here is the headless operation. Basically, open the installer. Of course, you have to uninstall the previous version first. Make sure you do that. Open the installer just like you would normally do, but it's going to have this little link right here, this little button, click on headless. And then you would just go ahead and click next, and you would enter your username, which is the same username you use to log into the actual interface that you go to online just put your username in there leave the command line tools selected click next i'll pull up my nvidia rig right here and as you can see there's nothing going click on my little arrow and usually has my little kudo miner right down in there if i don't have it blown up but if you go over to the web console right here you can see it's running there's my desktop when you go ahead and click on that 
And you can see I'm mining Zcoin and Monero. Got my mega hash right here, what I'm mining with, T-Rex right there. So once you actually go ahead and log in, you're gonna see your computer under devices right here and it'll should say disable. So all you're gonna have to do is click on your device right here and you'll see this little actions right here. So when it's not enabled, it's gonna have a little orange box right here. Just click enable. Then all of a sudden this will shift back over and you'll see the actions drop down and then you can go ahead and disable it if you'd like. But again, when it's not enabled yet, there'll be a little orange box right there and you just go ahead and click enable and it will start your miner on your computer without you having to do anything on your actual rig or computer or whatever you're actually using to mine with. So that's a nice feature, I really like that. Of course, it still goes through your total power watts, the highest temperature of a card on your rig, it says 75 right there, it says 74 here, so that's pretty close. Ejected revenue, 663,000 Satoshis a month, how many GPUs you got going, et cetera, et cetera, and then you can scroll down here and look at your revenue, hash rate, hardware, the actual cards you got right there. And it'll show you the list of cards, temperature. They have updated the interface here a bit. And it just seems that every time they do an update, this web console gets better and better. I really like it. And one last thing, again, this link will be down below. Update status, and this will just go over all the latest updates and versions that they have come out with in chronological order if you guys are kind of into that thing to see what they have done from the beginning to up until the latest version that's come out all right so let's go back over to the web console let's go to the home page as you can see i've been mining it since about february 25th when they reached out to me and asked to test this latest version along with a bunch of other people so i've been mining since then and as you can see it's been going really well right around 20,000 satoshis a day with this nvidia rig and here in the last few days even though the cryptocurrency market has taken a complete dump my satoshi value that i've mined has been steady and even going up just a little bit if you pull up my old Miner Cup series, you can see Kudo Miner right there in the final versus Nice Hash, 19,598 Satoshis. And I had 20,252 there, 21,497, 21,098, 21,025, etc., etc. So the new version update, version 1.0, does seem to have a little uptick in the amount of Satoshis you're going to be able to mine which is of course it's a good thing especially in times like these so i think that's going to wrap it up for the latest version of kudo miner if you guys want to check it out be sure to go ahead and check out the links below download it for yourself and let me know what you guys think i'm always interested in your guys feedback all right so my bitcoin friday's announcement if you guys have been with me for any amount of time you know that if bitcoin drops below seven thousand dollars in value i put bitcoin fridays on hold and as of making this video, I think we're sitting at about 5,300, 56, 53, 5,600. It's about bouncing around right in that range. So as of now, unfortunately, Bitcoin Fridays is on hold. But still, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I'm sure it won't be long before I'll be starting Bitcoin Fridays back up. So again, no Bitcoin Fridays this week. And there'll be no Bitcoin Fridays until Bitcoin gets back above 7,000 US dollars. Again, my apologies, but that's just one of my stipulations. Who knows what the future price of Bitcoin is going to be? I did do a guessment on it. If you guys want to check that video out, it should be popping up here shortly. If you guys have any additional questions or comments, be sure to put them down below and I'll definitely get back to you. I want to thank you guys for watching today. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.